When entering in a sales order within X3, the user will start by specifying the entry transaction to be utilized. In this particular example, we're going to be using a standard entry transaction. Other common examples that you may see would be um, an entry transaction for a direct order, meaning um, a situation whereby the sales order is not going to be fulfilled from your internal stock, but rather um, the sales order will be filled, the sales order demand will be filled by issuing a purchase order to your vendor in direct ship to your client. Another popular entry transaction type for sales order entry is the loan transaction whereby the expectation is that the product will be shipped to the client then at a later point in time uh, received back at your facility. Once in here the user can click on the new button. The first field that you're going to be prompted to define will be the sales site. You have a sales order type options that you can choose from. In this case, we're going to choose the normal sales order. The reference number is where the customer's purchase order number can be captured at. The date is representing the entry date index 3 or the date um, that you received the order from your client. Your sold to field will be populated with the customer identification number. One shortcut key that you will likely become familiar with is the F12 key. You will note that um, once the, the focus is on this field and I hit my F12, that's going to um, pop up for me a selection list. And from here I can choose the customer to assign to the order. Next, down on your controls tab, you have, and all this information defaults in from your customer master record, but you have your bill to pay by and group customer. Um, these fields oftentimes will take on the same value as what your customer identification number is for your soul to. Uh, exceptions may be if you have situations whereby um, you're conducting business with uh, maybe a group of companies for which they have a common parent entity and the invoices that you that are to be issued are either to be billed to or paid by that common parent entity. Um, this pay by field in those situations can be very helpful um, in um, the processing of your ultimately your accounts receivable for that client. Your ship to field here uh, represents the facility at your client's location that the goods should be shipped to. And again, you can use your F12 key to uh, select from your list of uh, ship twos if there is more than one. This project field, if you're utilizing the CRM projects within X3 to uh, capture different project related information, that can be assigned to the sales order. We have sales rep uh, codes that are uh, defaulted in from your uh, customer ship to address. We have our taxing information and currency captured in the lower left hand corner on the controls tab. Again, all defaulted in from your customer master. And here in the lower right hand corner we have um, global order indicators relative to whether or not the order has been signed off yet internally, whether or not the the order status if the order is still opened or if it's closed. We have this concept of allocations, meaning if um, available inventories have been reserved against the sales order. Um, our shipment status would indicate to us as to whether or not the shipping documentation has been generated yet for the order. The invoice status indicating to us as to whether or not the goods have left the facility and have ultimately been billed to the customer. We have a credit status down here, which will give us indications as to whether or not the credit is good on the customer's account and the sales order can be processed. Otherwise, it'll give us indications if the sales order has been put on, or excuse me, if the customer has been put on hold by the credit department, or we could also receive a limit exceeded message in this field, indicating to us that this um, sales order demand has took 
the customer over their authorized credit limit. Finally, down here we have a hold status indicator. Um, there's also a variety of different order holds that can be placed upon the order. Uh, holds for uh, purposes such as um, waiting to receive the purchase order from the client or waiting to receive the detailed specification um, would be a couple uh, examples of a hold that you may see instituted on the sales order. Next over here on our delivery tab we come to specify the warehousing site from which the goods should be shipped. Down in our shipping priority section here we can flag the sales order as being a normal order, a urgent order, or a very urgent order. And from there we can use those filters in our allocation and shipping processes. Down here also we have information relative to the transportation. Okay, the shipping mode is an indicator as to the method of transport, okay, whether it be ground, sea, air, um, and the different uh, shipping modes offered by carriers can also be manifest in here. Your carrier field in here, you can indicate the freight carrier that is responsible for transporting the goods. In here you also have a field whereby you can denote your freight terms whether those be FOB, CIF, DDP, and so forth. Okay. This uh, in the lower left hand quarter here we have indicators as to whether or not the sales order uh, may be uh, force close in the event that there was a partial shipment and um, the expectation is the balance of the shipment should not be fulfilled. We have an indicator as to whether or not the unfulfilled lines may be closed. We have another flag here for one order per shipment. If uh, it's desired to um, maintain a one-to-one -one relationship between your shipping documentations and your sales orders. And we also have a release flag on here that can be set by the, cust or by the credit department in the event that um, the customer is on hold or their limit exceeded and you still wish to ship out the order, this release flag can be set in order to accomplish that. Over on the right hand side we have our requested delivery date at the customer's facility. We have the number of days. Again this defaults in from the customer's ship to record. Okay, Then based upon this required delivery date and the delivery lead time what the expected ship date is. Once we have shipments go out against the sales order, um, X3 will present to you here the last shipment number as well as the last shipment date. Down in our partial shipment section here, we have indicators as to whether or not it's permissible to partially ship an order. Uh, we have settings um, anywhere from any type of partial shipment is allowed. Um, indicators here if um, partial shipments are permissible but you have to sh ship a complete sales order line then this last setting down here the most restricted um, meaning that the full order must be allocated before the shipping documentation can be generated finally here on the delivery tab we have indicators here of allocation type the buy warehouse option here indicates that when the allocation routine is performed against the sales order um, inventory would be reserved only on a global basis, meaning that um, detailed lot and locations um, allocations are not going to be performed upon the sales order. You're just saying that you're reserving, you know, the gross number of units against the order. Then you also have this by lot location option, meaning that a detailed allocation will be performed, uh, lot specification, uh, location specification, when the sales order allocation process is executed. Next here on the invoicing tab, we have indicators over here for our invoicing method. Um, it's, uh, one of the more common options is here is to have one invoice for each shipment that goes out, get out against the order. Um, other options include one invoice per closed order, one invoice per order, one invoice per ship to, one per specified period, whether that period be a week or a bi-weekly period or a month. Then we also have a manual um, invoicing option that we can set on the order. 
Next over here under our tender type we have different options uh, depending upon your folder including on account, credit card, and so forth. The payment terms indicated the expected number of days to be paid once the invoice is issued. Then we also have a settlement discount field here that we can use to indicate if the client is granted an early uh, discount for prompt payment. Okay. Uh, in here also we have indicators here of the quote if, in the event that this order was created from a quote, if there was any pro forma invoices gener generated against the sales order, then we also have an indicator here in the event that there's invoicing being already conducted on the order, what the last invoice number and last invoice date was. In addition to that, here in the lower right, um, we have what we call invoicing elements. And these invoicing elements can be set up to capture the below the line charges, um, including freight charges, surcharges, packaging charges, and so forth. So whatever uh, charges are expressed here, in part, will be carried forth to the invoice that's ultimately generated. Next here on our lines tab is where we come to to specify the products that we're selling to the client. We have our sales, sales unit of measure. We have the quantity that they ordered. We have our gross unit price as captured from a price book, which could, all, could be manually overridden so long as the user parameters permit for that. Okay. We have our source for shipment field here with our various options. In this particular example, that's going to be the expectation is that we're going to fill this order from stock. Um, we'll showcase um, in other uh, lessons these different sources for shipment, um, the different direct options as well as a work order option. Okay. Next here on our miscellaneous tab, we have indicators here. If we have the order set up for EDI processing, that there will be an indication here as to whether or not an EDI request is still pending. Then um, in addition to that, we have an order hold section here um, going back to those uh, different manual holds that can be instituted on the order. Finally, here on our documents tab, we can specify the expected uh, distribution method as well as the customer contact and at this point in time we're ready to go ahead and create the sales order and it'll in part uh, automatically assign a sales order number for us.